I'm very proud having received the uh, the medal. Uh, it was in, in uh, assisting in China in its opening to the world over 40 years. I first went to China in 1975. I used to go almost every year. Um, every year since, either one or two times, sometimes three times. Uh, so it means a lot to me. And compared to other medals I got, they were, they were different purposes. Um, um, two were in a war, uh, others in, in business, uh, but only one for China. And so I was very proud of that. I had known about China because I read about a great deal about the history of China. And, uh, and also uh, uh, how the American, uh, American helped China during the war uh, in World War II uh, when Japan invaded uh, China. I, so I knew, the, I knew the history. And I knew that uh, China then had its own revolution, obviously. And it took many years before China began to open itself up to the world. And uh, it was a very, at that time, a very poor country. A very, uh, there was very few foreigners in China. And the first thing that struck me, there were, there were no automobiles, only bicycles. Um, it was rare to say an it was rare to see an automobile. And, and the first hotel I stayed at in Beijing, there was only one. And then I stayed in the hotel in Shanghai, the same hotel that uh, President Nixon and, and Kissinger stayed in just before I, I got to China. So it was a very um, poor country at the time. And so the change that's taken place is very dramatic. It went from being closed to the outside world to trying to open to the outside world. Uh, but that can't be, it, it couldn't be done overnight. It had to be done uh, while China can manage it. And so there's been a great deal of change. Uh, and that led to many things happening in China. Uh, buildings went up. Uh, trying to modernize the country in many ways. Um, um, I was going to China every year, and, um, and I helped them. Um, he was mayor of, of Shanghai, Zhu Rongji. Uh, I helped him establish IBLAC uh, a, uh, to, to bring foreign investment to Shanghai. And that has been very successful. It's now 30 years old. It meets every year. I go to the meetings every year. I was the chairman for two terms. Um, and things like that have been going on, opening up, a, but opening up in a way that did not get out of hand. Um, it was being managed. And um, I think today it's a different, China's now the, the second largest economy in the world with a billion, 400 million people. Um, soon to be the number one economy in the world. PICC was a very small company, a very tiny company at the time. And I met with them and we began to have a dialogue maybe one or, or, or twice a year. I'd be going to China quite frequently and the reason I was going very frequently, uh, my company had business all over China, all over Asia, and so when I was in Asia, I, I, I would always stop in into China, and so I, I began to know the, the PICC people quite well. We helped train some of their people. We worked on some business together. We trained them both in China and outside of China. And so we built a relationship over the years, and it got bigger every, every time we met. And, and the same was happening in the country. Uh, you saw buildings going up, things happening. Uh, 
it was it was controlled happening because they didn't have all the experience yet to do very much. But gradually it became better and better. It was a very small company at the time, and uh, so the uh, the um, the knowledge that they didn't have about insurance uh, was very vast, and we trained them uh, both in China and outside of China. Uh, we used to meet at least twice a year, uh, and we started doing some business together, and we helped them. Um, um, there was one example, um, um, one of the first leaders of the PICC um, wanted to participate in our, in our reinsurance, and we said, fine. So we gave them what they wanted, and then that, that same year there was a big uh, hurricane in the United States. And there was a big loss on his little share, and it's a very small company. And they were they were very upset with the fact that there was a hurricane, and there was a loss on the policy, which is why you buy insurance. <laughs> and so um, they were very they were very concerned, and so we took back the loss as if it didn't exist. So we did things to help them financially, intellectually, okay? Normally, that, that wouldn't happen normally. Every license had to be um, approved by the, by the regulator in Beijing. It was, um, it was called CERC. Um, and the regulators themselves didn't have enough experience. It took time for them to learn about that industry. And we tried to help them as much as we could. Uh, um, and we did, uh, uh, over the years, we did quite a bit to help them learn about the industry. They did not want to open the market all at once. They wanted to do it slowly. And so 40 years later, they learned a lot, um, but there's still some differences uh, between the in the insurance sector as to um, as to what is permitted and what's not permitted. Gradually, it'll open completely. It's not completely open yet. We hope it will be soon. We both know that. Um, there currently is discussions going on between our two countries on trade. It's one thing uh, when China was just beginning to open up. They didn't have any experience. They were still a, a relatively uh, small country in world trade. They had a lot to learn. They had to attract capital to China. Uh, all of that took time. Uh, but China today is not the same China that it was when I first went to China. It's a different country. A different country. Now, as I said earlier, it's now the number two economy in the world. So you can't treat them the same way that you did 40 years ago. Uh, they don't need the same help. They're the number two economy in the world. Um, and it's a very wealthy country compared to, to what it was. And so there has to be changes that have to be negotiated. Uh, so if Chinese companies doing business in the United States are treated the same way as American companies, American companies expect to be treated the same way as Chinese companies in China. That's not always true in different industries it depends on what the industry is and who's a, and, and which government agency is approving it. And so these differences lead sometimes to things that shouldn't lead to. And so there has to be an agreement. The China today is not the China of, of, of 40 years ago. It's a different country. 
And so that's, uh, that's what's being negotiated now. I'm optimistic that, um, that in the next hundred years, uh, the relationships in it between our two countries will grow faster. And uh, um, I think they'll both benefit from that. The people of both countries will benefit from it. And I'm very optimistic about it. Well, I was proud. Uh, it was this is from the Chinese uh, uh, organization here, like their Chamber of Commerce. Uh, there was a big dinner the other night from the chamber, uh, and um, many Chinese companies were represented at the dinner. We try to help them in the United States. We want to write their insurance here because there's no Chinese, not many Chinese companies here insurance companies. We share some of that business with Chinese insurance companies. They want to participate. We encourage them. <laughs> and so what we're doing is good for both countries. Well, I, I wish them very good luck, obviously, and continued uh, progress. Uh, the people of China deserve it. Uh, it's a great civilization. It um, goes back hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. Uh, uh, we have a lot in common with China and its people. And the closer we are, the better it'll be for both of them, for both countries.